Good to be with you. It's good to be here to lay out the biennial revenue estimate. So today I am delivering the 2018-19 biennial revenue estimate to policymakers for their use during the 85th legislative session. This is one of the many duties of the controller's office and is required under Article 3, Section 49A of the Texas Constitution. Our projections are based on the expectation of moderate expansion in the Texas economy and renewed growth in state revenue collections. For general purpose spending in 2018-19, we estimate that state revenue available spending will be $104.9 billion as detailed in the first exhibit that we here have for you here today. In addition to the projected revenue available for the 2018-19 biennium, this chart shows our revised estimate for the 2016-17 biennium, which ends this August. This table shows the basic math used to arrive at this amount of revenue available for general purpose spending. As you can see, we are projecting a decline in available revenue from the 2016-17 to the 2018-19 biennium. It is important to note, however, that this decline is not due to a projected drop in total revenue collections for the 2016-17 biennium to the 18-19 biennium. We are projecting overall revenue growth from the current biennium to the next. Such growth, however, is more than offset by two factors that will affect revenue that's available for general purpose spending. The first of these can be seen in the line labeled beginning fund balances, about two thirds of the way down this table. As you can see, we are projecting a beginning balance for the 1819 biennium of about $1.5 billion, well below the nearly $7.3 billion from the start of the current biennium. Thus, this leaves $1.5 billion available for any supplemental appropriation needs for the 2016-17 biennium or cash carryover, obviously, to the 18-19 biennium. Next, I will point you to the numbers near the top of this chart that in November of 2015, voters approved Proposition 7, which dedicates up to $5 billion in biennial sales of tax collections to the State Highway Fund beginning in fiscal 2018. The passage of Proposition 7 was an important needed step in meeting our state's infrastructure needs. Infrastructure funding is an important criterion that credit rating agencies look at when assessing a state's credit quality. And all of us who drive on the roads here in Texas see every day the need for more highway funding investment. Prop 7 was only the latest in a series of positive steps that the legislature has taken towards meeting our state's infrastructure funding needs. This new dedication of sales tax revenue to transportation means that once sales tax revenues reach $28 billion in any given year, the next $2.5 billion will be directed to the State Highway Fund. That dedicated revenue is thus not available for general purpose spending. Pursuant to Proposition 7, we are projecting allocations to the State Highway Fund of about $2.2 billion in 2018 and $2.5 billion in 2019. As you can see from this chart, we expect sales tax collections of about $62 billion in the coming biennium, but only $57.3 billion will be available for general purpose spending. Added to that will be about $49.2 billion in other GR-related revenue and the $1.5 billion beginning balance I mentioned earlier for a total of $108 billion. After $3.1 billion, from severance tax collections are set aside to be transferred to the state's rainy day fund and the state highway fund, there will be $104.9 billion available to the legislature for general purpose spending in this coming biennium. Now, I would like to focus on how our overall tax revenues in the current biennium have consistently underperformed our expectations. Severance taxes have come in well below as oil and gas Prices have dropped lower and stayed lower for longer than we anticipated, as well as many other forecasters expected as well. While the decrease in severance tax is significant, it is not as much of an impact to available revenue for general purpose spending to the same degree as lagging sales tax collections. Sales taxes make up by far the largest share of general revenue, about 54% of our projected general revenue related collections for the 2018-19 biennium. In fiscal 2016, sales taxes came in 2.3 below fiscal 2015 and 2.9% below our expectations. In the next exhibit in our presentation shows our annual revenue from sales taxes going back to 2004 and including our projections for 2017 through 2019. 
Sales tax revenues typically grow from year to year, and the average growth rate for the last 20 years is 4.9%. But as you can see, in three of the last eight years, sales taxes have declined from one year to the next. During the Great Recession, sales taxes declined in 2009 and again in 2010. And then after five years of robust post-recession growth, sales taxes are going to decline in 2016. Revenue growth from sales taxes has historically been correlated with personal income growth, but the strength of that relationship has been weakened over time, and this is likely due in part to a higher share of personal income going towards things like housing and healthcare expenditures that are not subject to sales tax. If such a trend continues, it may put even more downward pressure on sales tax growth in the near future. We expect that a return to growth in total revenue from our sales taxes at below average rate of 2% this year, followed by more growth in line with the long-term trends in the coming biennium. You may have noticed we have two bars for each year of this chart. One is all funds revenue from our sales taxes, while the other is general revenue from sales taxes. The GR number is tied to what is available for general purpose spending. The all funds and GR amounts are about the same from 2004 through 2017, but they diverge a bit more starting in 2018. This is, of course, attributed to Proposition 7 and the new dedication of sales tax revenues going to the State Highway Fund. While we expect total revenues growing in 2018-19, there will actually be a slight decline in general revenue that is available for general purpose spending from sales taxes between 2017 and 2018 before returning to growth in 2019. I would like to take a moment here to discuss sales tax declines in 2016. A minor, a major reason for, the, for this drop was a decline in collections from the mining sector which in Texas is almost entirely made up completion of oil and gas of industry. Now, as you can see from this next exhibit, remittance from companies in the mining sector dropped by a large 52% in 2016, to the lowest that we've seen since 2010. In 2016, the mining sector accounted for just 2.9% of total sales tax collections, down from 6.1% in fiscal 2015 and weakness in the oil and gas industry has affected other sectors as well. Remittances from manufacturing and wholesale trade have been down, and even retail trade, the sector from which we gained the most amount of our sales tax revenues was slightly down in fiscal 2016. Now the upcoming legislature does face some challenges, given our projections of a decline in available revenue from this biennium to the next. However, the legislature is a very resourceful group and I stand ready to assist leadership in working through the challenges of this session. While our state revenues were down in 2016 and we face some difficult decisions in the coming months, it is important to note that Texas remains economically well positioned compared to other states. Despite the downturn in the oil and gas industry, Texas has gained 210,000 jobs in the last year. And while our gains have not been at the same rapid rate as of the last few years, it is important to note that we have increased jobs in 19 of the last 20 months. By contrast, other energy states have seen a net job losses and economic contraction. While the downturn in the energy sector has been a drag on the Texas economy's growth over the last two years, our state's diverse economy has allowed us to weather the storm much better than other states with large energy industries. Texas remains well positioned to outpace the U.S. economy in the long term, and after lagging a bit behind U.S. growth in fiscal 2016, we expect the Texas economy in the coming biennium to return to expansion at a rate in excess of that of the nation's. While revenues have lagged during the course of the current biennium, I would like to close on a slightly upbeat note. We have seen some positive indicators in recent months, including a slight acceleration in job growth, higher oil prices, and increases in states' rig count, and in fact, Texas accounts for 49% of active oil rigs operating in the United States today. And our December sales tax revenues were up 4.9% from a year ago, the best monthly performance since May of 2015. While it's too early to determine if we will have truly turned the corner, we will monitor our state's revenues particularly closely in the coming months while the legislature is still deliberating. Again, I stand ready to assist the 85th legislature, and I will, of course, update this estimate if new economic data warrant such an update. With that, then thank you for being here.
And uh, may God bless Texas. Thank you.